If you feel unprepared for your exam, this is GCSE Biology Paper 2 in 5 minutes. We have homeostasis and response, inheritance, variation and evolution, and ecology, so only three topics. So let's start off with homeostasis and response. First of all, the definition of homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment within your body. All that means is it balances the temperature, the blood sugar levels, the salt levels in your body, and also your water. We will go into each of those in a little bit more depth later on in the video. Next, you need to know about the nervous system. There are five components to this, the stimulus, the receptors, the coordinator, the effectors, and then the response. Within this process, there are also neurons, which are the sensory neurons, the relay neurons and the motor neurons. Sometimes there is something known as a reflex arc for subconscious actions. So for example, if you had your hand on a hot plate and it was burning, you would skip the coordinator and you would produce an automatic response through your spinal cord, which would cause you to take your hand away as soon as possible. The nervous system is basically a long system of nerve cells that are connected together. The axons and dendrites of each nerve cell are connected through a little gap called the synapse. Next, we have the endocrine system. This is basically the hormonal system that your body has. And here is a list of all the hormones, where they come from, and the function of them. In our definition of homeostasis, we talked about the balancing of blood glucose in your body. The two main hormones responsible for this are insulin and glucagon. Insulin is released when sugar goes in, and glucagon is released when glucose is gone. So when you don't have enough sugar. And water is balanced by the ADH hormone and your kidneys. And finally, plant hormones. Plants have auxins and gibberellins, which help plant elongation and basically growth. And fruits also release ethene, which helps them ripen. Moving on to topic number two, inheritance, variation and evolution. First of all, in this topic, we talk about sexual and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves two parents and produces genetically different offspring, whereas asexual reproduction requires only one parent and often produces identical offspring. Here are some advantages and disadvantages about each of those. Next, a really useful process to know about is called meiosis. This is the production of gametes from different cells. Next, we move on to DNA and the genome. Now, genome just means the complete set of DNA within an organism. You also need to know about the structure of DNA. DNA is a double helix structure that is made up of multiple nucleotides. Nucleotides are two base pairs, a sugar and a phosphate molecule, as you can see in this diagram. They join together to make the long chains that we often see as DNA. Some other definitions you need to know about are called alleles. Alleles are two versions of the same gene, one from each of your parents, and they can be dominant or recessive and can play a big role on the phenotypes and genotypes that you come out with as offspring. Genotype and phenotype just mean the genetic makeup and the physical features respectively. Because alleles are one from each parent, this is where variation comes in. Variation just means the differences between two species. This is often due to mutations that evolve over time. Another thing worth remembering are Punnett squares. Punnett squares can be used to determine the genetics that your offspring may have when two parents have specific traits. I'm sure you'd have seen these before, and if you haven't, make sure you understand how they work. Hopefully this diagram can help. Finally, we have Darwin's theory of evolution. This is the idea of natural selection. A small part of this topic that is also important is the classification of organisms. And all you need to know about is the seven words that I'm about to say. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. This is how different species are classified and how their ancestors can be identified. On to our final topic, topic number three of ecology. Most of ecology is just definitions that you need to be familiar with. Once you know these definitions, take them to past papers and other questions to make sure you can answer them. First of all, population. Population is the total number of a species in a certain area. If you have two or more populations within the same area, that is called a community. Competition arises when two or more organisms are fighting for resources. This could be prey or food or water or shelter. The things that organisms compete for can be split into two categories, abiotic and biotic factors. Here are some examples of each, and I would recommend trying to remember as many as you can because they do come up a lot in exams. Some organisms develop adaptations that help. These can be categorised into structural, physiological and behavioural. Something a lot of you have probably seen from a young age are food webs or food chains. They can be broken down into three things, producers, consumers, and predators. Each stage of a food chain or a food web 
is called a trophic level. So the producer is always trophic level one. The difference between the different trophic levels is to do with the amount of biomass. The biomass is at its peak at trophic level one at the producer. Two very important processes that you must know about are the carbon cycle and the water cycle. Here is the carbon cycle. And again, I would recommend learning the process of how the whole loop happens. And again, with the water cycle. Finally, one more definition, biodiversity. Biodiversity is a measure of the different species within an ecosystem. It is healthy for an ecosystem to have lots of biodiversity because this means that the food chains and all the natural processes can occur as normal. And that sums up a very brief summary of your paper two biology content. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help out. Thank you very much for watching and good luck in your exams.